Korsham did. Welcome. Today I'm just going to go over some essential Urdu words. Um, so Korsham did. That means welcome. That's it written here in the original Urdu, going from right to left. But for the purpose of this today, I'm going to be doing it all in Romanized Urdu. Just very quickly, in Urdu, whoops, in Urdu, there's two types of A sounds. There's the A as in father, that A uh sound, and the A as in apple, that longer A sound. So you've got A uh and A. Uh. So this is the short A. And when you see the double A together, it means it's a long A uh sound, as in apple, A. Uh. So salam, and that means hi, hello, but its literal meaning is peace. But it is used as a greeting. People say salam, salam. My name is Peter. So my example here, Mira Nam Peter here. So we say Mira Nam, and then you insert your name, then he. He means is, and that's singular usage, which I'll cover in a second. Then um, the next sentence is Apka Nam Kya He. Apka is your. Ap is you. Apka together becomes your. Nam is name. Kya means what. And he is are or is. So when I said Mira Nam Peter He, I said my name Peter is. When we say your, we change he, which is singular, it can be used to talk about itself, singular objects as well. We change it to he, which is plural. He usually means are, that's the closest translation, but it can also mean is as well in this context. So, what is your name? Abkanam kya he. Abkanam kya he. The N sound is kind of slightly nasalized, so it's like a he rather than he. He. Don't get too hung up on it. Whether you say he or he, it's not a problem. Pe people generally will understand. In in Pakistan and India, lots of people, they speak Hindi or Urdu. Generally, it's a second or a third language. Um, I'll cover that more in another video. But these just to memorize some of these sentences, just so can you start using them straight away. So we had apka before your calm is work. Apka calm kesa he. The word kesa it means how. However, kesa can change depending on the um, subject it's it's used with. So here we have ab ki kitab kesi hai. So it's changed from ka masculine to ki feminine, and that's because the word kitab, which I've highlighted in pink, is female. So ab ki kitab. Then kesa changes to kesi in this case. And you've got uh, he here. I'm not sure why I've grayed that out there. He. Aap ki kitab kesi he. How is your health? This is another feminine word. Aap ki kitab kesi he. So we have to change kesa to kesi. Again, don't get too hung up on this. When I first started learning Urdu, all the time people would joke with me, are you a boy or a girl, because I'd get things wrong. And then later on people would say, are you a Patan? And Patans live in the north. And the, the, the joke is, I mean, they learn, they already know like three languages usually before they learn Urdu, and they get the, the genders wrong all the time. So don't worry too much about it. As long as people understand what you're talking about, and you can understand them in return, you can have a conversation. Aapka dafta kaha hai? Abka dafta kaha hai. So, your office, where is kaha means where. A bit like he, it's a nasalized n sound. Kaha. Abka dafta kaha hai. So, where is my book? Meri kitab kaha hai. So, before we had mira nam, mira nam, which is masculine. Now we've got Mary feminine kitab. So my feminine Mary kitab kaha he. And that doesn't matter whether you're a boy or a girl, it has to agree with the noun. So again, the noun is feminine. So Mera will become Mary in this instance. 
आप कैसे हैं हवा यू आप कैसे हैं हेयर कैसे द ए साउंड कैसा सिंगुलर मास्किलिन कैसी फेमिनिन आप even though it can address one person it's because of its respectful nature it can also be used to address two people and it always has plural endings as we saw earlier with hair so in this case kese would be used for plural so if i was addressing a group of people i'd say aap log log being people aap log kese hain if i said kaisa hai aap log kaisa hai would be wrong aap log kaisi hain wrong aap log kaise hain would be correct but again don't get too hung up on that as you practice more and more you know you'll pick it up i am well me theek hoon me theek hoon and again this end i'm just highlighting it here it's again it's that nasalized no sound so it's almost like it's not quite who like a who but it's who me theek hoon i am well me theek hoon me i hoon am as in i am me hoon or up sometimes or is written a u r oops but i'm going with a, a common spelling of it i've seen so or up so me theek hu i am well or up and you up theek hai so up theek hai with this up theek hai can be a statement you are well you are good you are fine depending on intonation it can be a question as well but there's an absolute way to make questions as well which i'll show you in a moment you can also say i'm great i'm really swell mai bilkul theek hu mai bilkul theek hu bilkul means absolutely or totally and it comes from the arabic word balkul apparently grand is a word I've not heard anywhere apart from in India but it's used commonly all the time they'll say barya which means grand so aap theek hai barya aap kaise hai barya you may also hear first class as well which means fantastic or first class um this will be used quite a lot by people in the north mirpris who speak urdu as well so they'll say aap theek hai and they'll say first class or aap kaise hain and how are you aap kaise hain main theek hu aur aap kaise hain main bilkul theek hu bariya first class so this case here would be for the um either for plural or when used addressing somebody as aap kaise How is your day going? Aapka din kaise ja raha hai? So aapka your remember this is the respectful your. So din is day, so kaise this is the kaise used for plural. Now aapka din kaisa? Aapka din kaise? Aapka din kaise ja raha hai? Another way of saying it in Urdu is saying aapka din guzara hai. aapka din guzara hai din day you could reply to this could say kuch khas nahi kuch khas nahi kuch means some khas means special and nahi can mean no non or not depending on the context so something special not kuch khas nahi nothing special We had this one earlier as well. Aapki tabiyat kaise hai? How is your health? Aapki tabiyat aapki tabiyat kaise hai? Good morning. This is sub bakhe. Sub bakhe. Sub means morning. Bakhe is a Persian word and it 
it means good. They have another word in Persian, which is kub, which also means good. But the, re- the only time really I think you're going to see bakhair in Urdu is really with uh, good morning or good evening expression. So sub bakhair, or in poetry, shairi, they might use it in shairi as well, poetry. So sub bakhair, good morning. Sub morning. Sham bakhair, good evening. Sham bakhair, sham is evening. Another good one to know, would you maaf kijiye? And this is a very polite way of saying, excuse me, I am sorry, or forgive me. Would you maaf kijiye? Would you, to me, maaf, forgiveness, kijiye? Please do. To say thank you, you can say shukriya, or bohut shukriya. Bohut means uh, very much, or very. Yeah is an interesting word. This means this. It can also mean he or she, depending on the context. So, yeah, kia he. This, what is? Yeah, kia he. So, if something's nearby, it's nearby. I'm, I'm tapping it, it's nearby. Yeah, kia he. What is this? If I'm having to point at it, it's really far away. It would be va. And that would be, va kia he? What is that? In the distance, va kia he? Now, posing a question, I said earlier, when you say, aap he? It can be a statement or a question, depending on the intonation. But most questions in Urdu have a kia, a what place at the beginning. And that makes it a definite question and not a sentence anymore. So I'd probably give you examples. I'm just going to go over this word. This is um, halal. So you've got your two A's in here. You've got the short A and the long A. Halal. People say halal in the UK. It's halal. Halal. And that's the symbol. You may see this in all kinds of places, restaurants. Um, you'll see some food packaging now in the UK as well. Um, you know, it'll tell you for meat whether it's um, halal in some instances or not. People um, who are Muslim. Um, halal means permissible, so they're allowed to eat halal food. So they may have to look for the, that symbol on the packaging, or they may have to ask if it's halal. So they can ask, yeah, halal here? Or they can state this question. Again, it can be a question if it's intonation, yeah, halal here? Yeah, halal here? Let's make it a definite question. Kya, yeah, halal here? Is this halal? Kya, yeah, halal here? I could state it is halal. Yeah, halal here? Kya ye halal hai? I could say, ha, which means yes. Ha, ye halal hai? Yes, it's halal. I'm asking the question, is it forbidden? Ye haram hai? Is it forbidden? Could be more of a intonation, ye haram hai? As well. But if I want to make it a definite question, kya ve haram hai? Talking about something in the, further away. Kya ve haram hai? Or if it's nearby, kya ye haram hai? So remember, we've got near and far. Ye for near and va for far. So this book is good. So this book is near. So ye kitab achi hai. So kitab is feminine. So the word acha becomes achi. This table is very good. This table is nearby, so I can touch it. It's close. It's nearby. Ye mez acha hai. So this table is good. And I've turned that in blue to show that it's acha. Because um, mez is a masculine word. I would like. Mujhe chaiye. Mujhe chaiye. Don't worry about the capitalization. That's just... I've done that there. So, mujhe chahiye. And we can insert what we like in the middle of that sentence. So, mujhe pani chahiye. Pani is water. Mujhe pani chahiye. I need water. So, we've got our first three numbers now. Ek, do, teen. Ek is one. Do is two. Teen is three. Mujhe ek kok chahiye. I would like a coke. Oops would like a coke would you egg cook chaye and this is a very polite way of asking something as well would you do samosa 
चाहिए मुझे दो समोसे चाहिए सो इन इंग्लैंड विल बी वन समोसा टू समोसेस प्लूरो समोसेस इन अर्डू विल बी समोसे मुझे दो समोसे चाहिए सो इफ दिस इज वन मुझे एक समोसा चाहिए मुझे दो समोसे चाहिए ओके सो इफ इट्स थ्री हाउ वुड यू सेट हाउ वुड यू आस्क फॉर थ्री समोसेस मुझे तीन समोसे चाहिए मुझे तीन समोसे चाहिए आई वुड लाइक वन समोसा टू कोक्स एंड थ्री पकोरास मुझे एक समोसा दो कोक और तीन पकोरे चाहिए मुझे एक समोसा दो कोक और तीन पकोरे चाहिए ओके मुझे दवा की जरूरत चाहिए सो यू नो मुझे चाहिए मीन्स आई वुड लाइक दवा इज मेडिसन दवा की इज अट लाइक आप की इट्स लाइक an apostrophe s yes, almost it's like a linking word between these two words and the next word is zarurat zarurat means certainly it emphasizes i really need this mujhe dawa ki zarurat chahiye mujhe dawa ki zarurat chahiye so if i needed water desperately it would be mujhe um, pani ki zarurat chahiye zarurat certainly to need something dawa is medicine So I could say, "Mujhe madad ki zarurat chahiye." I need help, and this would be helping me with something. This would be, um, you know, I've got to lift something. Mujhe madad ki zarurat chahiye. Um, I'm trying to find somewhere. Mujhe madad ki zarurat chahiye. But if I was in like real distress, like I needed help, maybe you're being mugged or you're being robbed, then that word would be "bachao." So you say "bachao." Bachao. So I used to see this a few years ago. Lots of T-shirts. People wearing the T-shirts said Bachao in Hindi, and I often wondered. I wonder if people are wearing it know what it means. <laughs> But anyway, uh, Bachao is help. Me ko gaya hun. Me ko gaya hun. I am lost. Ko means lost. Gaya means went. Literally, I. Lost went am. Me ko gaya hun. Mera passport ko gaya hai. Mera passport ko gaya hai. With this, it's mera because the um, the noun is masculine passport. If it was a feminine word here, like uh, I've lost my book, it'd be meri kitab ko gayi hai. Meri kitab ko gayi hai. <coughs> oh, sorry. Ko gayi. Meri kitab ko gayi hai. Gaya went. Now this is an interesting one, and it took me a long time to get this concept. So I'm hoping I can explain this quite well here and save you a lot of time. Me means I. Me ni is used when something's been done. The best way to explain it is when you say I've. So. I've lost my parents, so many I've apni means my own or its own, which I'll cover in a second. Many apni, so I've my walidan parents ko ko dia hai. Ko here is like a linking word; it means two, basically. So many apni walidan ko ko dia ko dia hai. Sorry. <coughs> मैंने अपने वालिदान को को दिया है। I have lost my parents. In this case, it's not गया went, it's दिया, which means given. So literally, my parents, my own parents, to lost gave are. So remember, early doesn't translate word for word into English. But that that's how it would be used in this sentence. Many apni wale dan ko ko dia hai. Today I've been to my mother's house. So aaj is today. Many I've apni 
army ki gar gaya army is mother's his mother ki it's like mother's imagine like um possessive of mother so army ki mother's gar gaya aaj maine apni army ki gar gaya Another if sentence that's useful to use is if you've been asked if you've been somewhere, you can use Pakistan's example here. You could say, Many kabi Pakistan nahi gaya. In Urdu, um, Pakistan, here in English, we have the two A's as in father, like uh, Pakistan. They say Pakistan, it's longer. Pakistan, many kabi Pakistan nahi gaya. I've been to Pakistan one time, so many ekbar Pakistan gaya. So you can insert any country that you've been to. So you can think of, you've been to Thailand, you could say, Many ekbar Thailand gaya. So I've never been, Many kabi nahi gaya. That's just saying I've never been, without stating where you've been to. Many kabi nahi gaya. And I've never seen it, Many kabi nahi deka. Many kabi nahi deka. Parents, we covered this earlier, earlier, validan, validan. So it's the long R, then the short R, validan. Ko, lose. Apni is your own or my own. So many, apni, ami ki gar. So it's in this sentence we did earlier. It's apni. It's, um, <clears throat> basically, it's the subject here. So it's mother's own house. So today I went to mother's house. <coughs> Many ek achi film deki hai. Many ek achi film deki hai. So acha here becomes achi because it agrees with the feminine noun. So Many ek achi film deki hai. And deka becomes feminine as well, deki. Many ek achi film deki hai. I've lost my map. Many apni naksha kodia hai. Many apni naksha kodia hai. So remember how to ask for things. And we've got the word and in there as well. So mujhe ek kok or ek pani chahiye. So expanding on that sentence, you can also put in things as well, like whether we want it hot or cold. So, mujhe garam chai chaiye. Mujhe garam chai chaiye. I would like hot tea. Chai is tea, garam is hot. Mujhe tanda pani chaiye. Tanda, I've had to capitalize the T and the D. When we say, um, when we use T's in English, it's with a soft t t t sound. If you bring that ta, 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 to the back of your throat, it becomes ta, 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 like tanda. And the same with the D as well. Towards the back of the mouth, it makes a da, da sound rather than D, D. Go D, 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 like that. Like it goes further back, gets more dental. Mujhe tanda pani chahiye. Ye chai tanda hai. This tea is cold. Kya ye chai garam hai? Asking a question, is this tea hot? Is this tea hot? And again, we can state something. So we can say, ye kana chai hai? This food is good. Ye kana chai hai? We can ask the question, is this food good? Kya ye kana chai hai? Kya ye kana chai hai? Is this food good? And we can say, ha, which is yes. Um, again, this has this slightly nasalized N sound to it. Um, but if you're speaking to somebody who's older than yourself um, or in a position of authority, use Jiha. Jiha. It's more formal. Um, don't use Hanji, which um, some people do use it, but it's better to stay with Jiha. It can be seen as informal. Even though you're using G. So, nahi can be nahi G for no. Remember, no, not or non for nahi. And another useful word is beer melenge. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. And beer melenge. I'll see you again.
Take care.